This is what happens every time I go to buy shoes. Um, do you have these in an 11? <laughs> sure. <laughs> One sec. I'll check. Where's this guy's legs and what is he gonna do with these? The number one question I've gotten my whole life and, and will always get, um, whether it's online or in person, is usually where are your legs? How do you drive a car? And this one I get all the time is how do you go to the bathroom? Because I think people get confused looking at my body and, and not having any legs. They, they're trying to figure out how, how that all works. I go to the bathroom just like everyone else. You know what? I want to make sure that everyone hears this. I go to the bathroom just like everyone else. I joined TikTok about a year ago, just like sort of when the pandemic started. Um, and I actually thought I was like too old. I'm like, I'm 40, like, I think I'm too old for this. Or just a funny challenge of like, tell me you're short without telling me that you're short. It sort of started it as a fluke. And then it was like, cool, this is another tool that I can use to, you know, bring a little heart humor and awareness to my lived experience as someone that has a physical disability and that also identifies as gay. It's the most accessible time of the year for me. The weather is beautiful, which means less barriers for me. Because I don't have to worry about snow on the sidewalk, I can navigate the city in my wheelchair and I don't have to rely on my car as much. Now I, I use a wheelchair to sort of get around and be mobile, and then at home and in different situations, I'll, I'll walk on my hands as well. A lot of you have asked, Spencer, do you wear pants? The answer is no. But yes, I don't wear pants. I wear shorts. I grew up in a time where we were told that your disability doesn't define you. We were told that your disability, you, you can overcome it and you want to be seen as normal and just like everyone else. And you know, now we understand that that's such harmful ableism, both internally and externally in, in our community and, and in the, the global community in particular. I had to learn how to lean into my disability and, and be proud of that. Being gay and disabled, it's so interesting. I sort of felt like I, I constantly have to come out twice, specifically, you know, as we live in an age of like online dating. I initially wouldn't put it in my profile that I had a disability because I, I just, I, I didn't think that it mattered. And then I would eventually have to disclose that I had a disability. And then A, it felt like I was coming out for a second time for something else. And then B, there was a lot of mixed reactions. Some people were angry. Some people would block me. Some people would fetishize me. So there was all these different reactions to my disability. And I started to realize that I, I actually have to own this in a much deeper way than I, than I have before. I think what's interesting about the pandemic is suddenly everyone was denied access to the world. And for the first time, at least in my in my lifetime, everyone experienced what it was like in some regard to have a disability. I Meaning, y'all no longer had access, similar to uh, to myself. And you know, as the world starts to open up, y'all will go back to a world that's accessible to you. And I will still return to a world that has a lot of barriers for myself and so many other folks in, in the disability community. Quick tip when interacting with folks with disabilities. Please don't touch here, or here, or here, without consent. We choose to allow these barriers to exist as a society and as the individuals. We, we actively choose that. If we all started saying, I'm not going to a restaurant anymore until you create a ramp, and I will not dine at your, I will not shop at your store anymore until there's an accessible washroom, we could get a lot done. <laughs>